Six years ago, this was a thriving neighborhood. Now, 11 meters of mud covers what was a village in Indonesia, thanks to what experts are calling the world's biggest mud volcano. It erupted as a company of one of the country's most powerful business families drilled for gas in 2006 near the town of Sidoharjo on the east coast of Java in Indonesia. The Bakri family, with headquarters in the capital Jakarta, have interests in mining, telecoms, infrastructure, life insurance and natural resources. They claim their drilling can't be directly blamed for the natural disaster, although they have paid out millions to those affected. Some 40,000 people have had to leave their homes and businesses. More than two dozen factories and four villages have been buried. All that remains here is the tip of a mosque's minaret. Tens of thousands more people living close to the disaster site could yet be evacuated, the government says, because their homes and schools are unsafe. Today, the muddy water is pumped out of the disaster site into the nearby Porong River. Perhaps somewhat amazingly, the river is clean enough for marine life to thrive. People fish and cafes and food stalls have sprung up to cater to the population that has adapted to the mud flow. The government has erected greenhouses to stimulate economic activity and is training young people in skills such as mechanics and sewing. Although it denies wrongdoing, the Bakris have promised compensation, giving evacuees either new homes or money. But in the past year, those who were relying on the support have suffered further disappointments. For some, the Bakri's cash has dried up, and even those with new homes are uncertain of their ownership rights. The majority of those who chose to be rehoused have moved into this housing estate, 10 kilometers from the site. But as banners and signs around the estate point out, few have hold of the title deeds for their properties. Without that collateral, they're unable to secure bank loans to rebuild their lives or finance their children's education. It's a similarly bleak outlook for thousands who elected to take their compensation in cash. The payments began to evaporate in 2010, and while the Bakris have resumed paying some victims, others say they have no idea when they might receive what's been promised. Some wonder if the Bakris will make good on their promises before the mud stops spewing, which experts say is likely to be several decades away. John Aglinby, Financial Times, Sidoharjo.